Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you can you hear me? Thank you. Um, good evening, everybody. It's good to see you all here. Uh, before we get started, I just want to uh, point out a couple of things. You have a cell phone or mobile phone. If you either put it on vibrate or shut it off, please, I'd appreciate it. I remember telling uh, the audience one time at a meeting to do that, and in the middle of, of a presentation, my phone went off. So needless to say, it's a lesson learned. And it looks like we're on. So um, good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, welcome you to the uh, Bristol Township Planning Commission. I'm opening the meeting, and it appears to be 7.01. That clock's off. Um, so first I'm going to, and I'd like to uh, welcome our viewing audience. Um, I would kindly ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. you to remain standing to keep in mind our troops that are in harm's way our prisoners of war our killed in action our missing in action for all the children that have been separated from their parents and any personal intentions you may have thank you very much Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, commissioners, before we get into the agenda, uh, commissioners, we do have consideration for the July 20th, 2022 Planning Commission meeting minutes. Uh, I would entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. Second. I have a motion, and it's been second to approve those minutes. To any comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much, commissioners. The first, the first item on our agenda is consideration of proposed ordinance, an ordinance amending the code of the Township of Bristol, Chapter 205, zoning limiting properties to have a single principal use. Whereas the Council of the Township of Bristol is empowered to adopt ordinances of the Township pursuant to the Pennsylvania First Class Township Code 53 PS 56502 and whereas the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code authorizes Township of Bristol to amend its zoning ordinance 53 PS 10609 and whereas the Council of the Township of Bristol believes an amendment to the zoning ordinance to limit each property to a single principal use is necessary to protect the health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the residents of the township and is in accordance with the township's comprehensive plan for future development. Now, therefore, the Council of Bristol Township, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, does hereby ordain and enact the following. The following provisions shall be added to section 205-171. Only one principal use per property or parcel is permitted. Whenever the requirements of this ordinance are in conflict with other requirements of the ordinance of the Township of Bristol, the most restrictive, the most restrictive or those imposing the higher standards shall govern. The provisions of this ordinance are severable. If any action, clause, sentence, part, or provision hereof shall be held illegal, invalid, or unconstitutional by any court of competent jurisdiction, such decision of the court shall not affect or impair any of the remaining sections, clauses, sentences, 
parts or provisions of this ordinance. It is hereby declared to be the intent of the Council of Bristol Township that this ordinance would be would have been adopted if such legal, invalid, or unconstitutional section clause sentence part or provision had not been included herein. This ordinance shall become effective immediately. Commissioners, I have read the ordinance. I would entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. I have a motion to approve Second. the I have a motion to approve the ordinance. It's been moved and second. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you, Commissioners. The second ordinance is an ordinance amending the code of the Township of Bristol, Chapter 205 Zoning, to include regulations for a smoke shop and tobacco stores. An ordinance amending the code of the Township of Bristol, Chapter 205 Zoning, to include regulations for smoke shops and tobacco stores. Whereas the Council of the Township of Bristol is empowered to adopt ordinances of the Township pursuant to the Pennsylvania First Class Township Code 53 PS 56502 and whereas the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code authorizes Township of Bristol to regulate permitted use through zoning to protect the general health, safety, and welfare of the citizens and business of the Township of Bristol, 53 PS 10604 and Whereas the expansion of smoke shops and tobacco stores in the Township of Bristol may detrimentally affect the community, including, but not limited to, increasing the potential use of tobacco by minors, adding to the sales of illegal drug paraphernalia marketed as tobacco paraphernalia, contributing to blight and the loss of property values in proximity to such uses and detracting from the aesthetic appeal of the township. And whereas the council of the township of Bristol finds the regulation of smoke shops and tobacco stores is necessary and in the interest of the public health, safety, and general welfare because there is the substantial likelihood of the continued establishment and operation of smoke shops and tobacco stores in the township of Bristol while providing for a reasonable number of locations and zones for such shops, stores, to locate within the Township of Bristol. Now, therefore, be it ordained and enacted by the Council of the Township of Bristol, Section 205-11 of the Township of Bristol Zoning Ordinance is amended to include the following definitions. E-cigarettes. Any electronically activated device or inhaler meant to stimulate cigarette smoking that uses a heating element to vaporize a liquid solution, popularly, popularly referred to as juice, and that cause the user to exhale any smoke, vapor, or substance other than that produced by unenhanced human exhalation, the juice used in e-cigarettes typically contains nicotine. And for this reason, e-cigarettes and their juices can be classified as both tobacco products and tobacco paraphernalia. Smoke shop. Any premises having more than 250 square feet dedicated to the delivery, display, distribution, furnishing, marketing, offering and or sale of cigarettes, cigars, e-cigarettes, chewing tobacco, or other tobacco products and paraphernalia. Tobacco, any preparation of the nicotine-rich leaves of the tobacco plant, which are cured by a process for drying and fermentation for use in smoking, chewing, absorbing, dissolving, inhaling, snorting, sniffing, or ingesting, by any other means into the body. Tobacco paraphernalia, any paraphernalia, equipment, device, or instrument that is primarily 
designed or manufactured for the smoking, chewing, absorbing, dissolving, inhaling, snorting, sniffing, or ingesting by any other means into the body of tobacco, tobacco products, or other controlled substances as defined in the Pennsylvania Controlled Substance, Drug, Device, and Cosmetic Act 35 PS 780-113A33. Tobacco product. Any product in leaf, flake, plug, liquid, or any other form containing nicotine derived from the tobacco plant or otherwise derived which is intended to enable human consumption of the tobacco or nicotine in the product, whether smoked, chewed, absorbed, dissolved, inhaled, snorted, sniffed, or ingested by any other means. For the purpose of this section, the term tobacco product includes any product that has been specifically approved by the United States Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, for sale as a tobacco slash smoking cessation product or for other medical purposes where such product is marketed and sold solely for such an approved purpose. Tobacco store, see smoke shop. Section 205-16D1 of the Township of Bristol Zoning Ordinance is amended to remove the word tobacco. D1 retail shop. A shop or store with a gross floor area of 10,000 square feet or less selling apparel, books, confections, drugs, dry goods, flowers, foodstuffs, furniture, gifts, hardware, toys, household appliances, jewelry, notions, periodicals, shoes, stationery, paint, cards, novelties, hobby, and art supplies, Music, luggage, sporting goods, pets, floor covering, garden supplies, plants, fabrics, automotive accessories, and service businesses such as barber, beautician, laundry, and dry cleaning, not to include dry cleaning and dyeing plant. Shoe repair, tailor, photographer, travel agency, and photocopy center. Also included within this use, shall be the sale of soft drinks, beer, and other alcoholic beverages in sealed containers, in sealed containers, not for consumption on the premises. Section 205-16 of the Township of Bristol Zoning Ordinance is amended to include the following land use regulation. D33, smoke shops and tobacco stores. Any premises having more than 250 square feet dedicated to the delivery, display, distribution, furnishing, marking, marketing, offering and or sale of cigarettes, cigars, e-cigarettes, chewing tobacco, or other tobacco products and paraphernalia. Notwithstanding any other provisions of this title, to the contrary, smoke shops and tobacco stores shall be a conditional use in the commercial zoning district. Requirements for conditional use approval include smoke shops and tobacco stores shall not be operated or maintained on a parcel within 1,000 feet measured by a straight line in any direction from any property line without regarding to intervening structures or objects of the nearest point on a property line or a parcel containing a public, private, or parochial school or daycare center, youth or community center, public park or religious institution. Smoke shops and tobacco stores shall not be operated or maintained on a parcel within 1,000 feet measured by a straight line in all directions from any property line without regard to intervening structures or objects of the nearest point on a property line of a parcel containing another smoke shop or tobacco store. No smoking shall be permitted on the premises at any time. No self-service, e-cigarette, tobacco, tobacco product, or tobacco paraphernalia displays shall be permitted. No distribution of free or low-cost e-cigarette, tobacco, tobacco products, 
for tobacco paraphernalia as well as coupons for said items shall be permitted. No sales may be solicited or conducted on the premises by minors. It shall be unlawful for smoke shops or tobacco stores to permit a minor not accompanying a not accompanying a parent or guardian to enter into or remain on the smoke shop in the smoke shop or tobacco store. Smoke shops and tobacco stores shall post clear signage at all points of entry stating that minors are prohibited from entering unless they are accompanied accompanying a parent or guardian. Smoke shops and tobacco stores that are legally existing on the effective date of this section may continue to operate as legally as legal non-conform uses and shall not be required to obtain conditional use approval. However, any change or expansion of the legal non-conform use shall require compliance with this section and conditional use approval. Section 205-36C of the Township of Bristol Zoning Ordinance is amended to include D3 smoke shops and tobacco stores as a conditional use. All provisions of the Code of the Township of Bristol inconsistent or in conflict with this ordinance are hereby repealed to the extent of such inconsistency or conflict. The provisions of this ordinance are severable. If any section, clause, sentence, part, or provision hereof shall be held illegal, invalid, or unconstitutional by any court of competent jurisdiction, such decision of the court shall not affect or impair any of the remaining sections, clauses, sentences, parts, or provisions of this, of this ordinance. It is hereby declared to be the intent of the Council of the Township of Bristol that this ordinance would have been adopted if such illegal, invalid, or unconstitutional section, clause, sentence, part, or provision had not been included herein. This ordinance shall become effective immediately. Commissioners, you've heard the ordinance. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. I'll second. I, I have a motion and I have a second. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you, commissioners. I know that's kind of long and drawn out, uh, but I will say we certainly have it on record and all our residents have heard it. The next item on our agenda is land develop. Is, uh, is, is that us here yet? Okay. So uh, our next item on the agenda is land development for Genesis Industrial LLC. Uh, currently, the applicant is not present for a conflict in their schedule. They'll be here shortly, I understand. So we're going to continue with the next items on the agenda. And the next item on the agenda is a combination of three items on the agenda. And this is the petition for amendment to Bristol Township Zoning Ordinance, the petition of JRSGF LLC to amend the Bristol Township Zoning Ordinance, Chapter 205 of the Bristol Township Code of Ordinances relating to the regulations for use A8-Age Qualified Residential Community to reflect the proposed development of the properties located at 101 Green Book Drive, Levittown, PA, TP number 5-72-113 for John Fitch property, 10 Plum Tree Place, Levittown, PA, TP number 5-21162-001 for Abraham Lincoln property, and 275 Crabtree Drive, Levittown, PA, TP that number 5-39-584-001, George Washington property. Before we go on to that, and good evening, sir. And Matt, thank you very much. And before we proceed, I'm going to read the other two sure, because we're going to... Um, 
uh, seeing how they're all inter intertwined with each other, uh, this commission certainly wants to know a lot more. So the next thing will be a conditional use for John McGrath, one two six five. Uh, it's John McGrath, one two six five Woodburn Road, Levittown, PA, requesting conditional use approval in order to create an age qualified residential community on a property located at one o one Greenbrook Drive, Levittown, PA, tax parcel number five dash seven two dash one three three. And John McGrath, conditional use, John McGrath, 1265 Woodburn Road, Levittown, PA, requesting conditional use approval in order to create an age-qualified residential community on a property located at 10 Plum Tree Place, Levittown, PA, tax parcel number 5-21-162-001. Land development for JRSGF LLC, 1265 Woodburn Road, Levittown, requesting preliminary and final land development approval for an age qualified residential community in the property located at 101 Greenbrook Drive, Levittown, PA, tax parcel number 5 72 113, and also a sketch plan. For JRSGF LLC, 1265 Woodburn Road, Levittown, requesting sketch plan review for property located at 10 Plum Tree Place, Levittown, PA, tax parcel number 5 21 162 001. So, Matt, before we go, Matt, correct? Correct. All right. I'm a senior. I have a tendency of forgetting, and if I don't write it down, I'm in trouble. So, um, Matt, uh, I will, um, if you don't mind, that we indulge a little bit um, because there are, first of all, a few things going on here. Obviously, um, the applicant coming prior to your presentation isn't here, but we anticipate them. Um, uh, you have no objections to us just stopping where we're at. We can let that applicant proceed. Will not be offended if you don't ask questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and secondly is, uh, as I read for the record, all the things that are involved in the JRSGF process of what's going on here, this commission would like to, before we even consider uh, the amendment, we would like to hear your presentation about everything that's going on here. So this commission has uh, uh, an idea of what's happening. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Uh, I believe that the Board of Review Board will make high-level presentations of the plan uh, at the State Council to the Board of Planning and Review, uh, and then they can do the proper planning for the plan. So it's your presentation, and then we can get into specifics of what it would be like to put your plan together. Quick question, is your microphone green? Is it green? Yeah, it's green. There we go. Hey, there you. we go. Perfect. Thank you. I don't think you have to repeat that, but we got yeah. the message. So. And, and if I could, I'd just like to introduce some of the members of the developers team here. We have from the developer, uh, John McGrath, Chris Levins, Bob Wagner. Uh, we have civil engineers, Larry Young and Kamar Ahmad, and then our traffic engineer, Mark Roth. All of them are available to answer any questions you might have. And as we go through this, feel free to interrupt me and ask any questions. Hopefully we can provide as much information as possible. Thank you very much for that. And if any of you have business cards before you leave, just present them to the table over here so they have an idea of who's sure. here. And I think, Mr. Greer, as you indicated, I think this is one of the more high-profile developments in the township. I don't think it needs very much introduction by way of background, but uh, the developer has acquired title to the three schools here from Bristol Township School District. We've been working with the township staff uh, over the period of a little over two years now, if not more. So, Matt, let me just interrupt for a second. You're correct in some of that. Mm -hmm. um, and now that we've televised everything, there's a lot of the township that may not be familiar. Sure, and I'm happy to provide. And if you have any questions, feel free to, to ask. Thank you. 
um, we've been working with the township staff to find a way to uh, facilitate the development of these three properties in accordance uh, with the restrictions of the sale from of the property from the school district to the developer. Uh, the school district required and requested a deed restriction that these properties be developed okay, as age restricted. Excuse me, ma'am. Could you just move the mic closer to you? Sure. Appreciate it. Better. Thank you as uh, age restricted 55 plus communities. Uh, there was current zoning in place in the township, uh, but as we began to go through that and tried to figure out a way to take three very different sites here uh, of different uh, sizes, location, uh, and different site constraints and tried to figure out a way to uh, work the zoning ordinance uh, and the plans to come in a position that made sense for the community, for the developer, and the township. So we feel like we've gotten to a place uh, working through that with staff where we're ready to present that to the Planning Commission. We've had some presentations before Council, but I believe it's the first time we're before all of you. Um, so on the screen you have right now is the plan, a rendered site plan for John Fitch. And we have hard copies available if you prefer us to pass those out for the Commission, we can do that. I don't believe that we need the hard copies. Okay. I don't so, believe we need them, but I will ask you, Matt, I will ask you this question, because I sure. usually ask this any time we have any kind of especially big project going mm -hmm. on. Sure. Did your people, the developer, whoever it is, did they actually talk to the residents in the areas that are going to be affected? Sure. Actually, we've had multiple site meetings at the schools, uh, including as early as this, th as recent as this past week. Thank you. Uh, and we did it last summer and sometimes before, and we've had feedback from from community on those items. So the community's been involved throughout this process. Um, Madam Chair, when was the meeting that you most recently had with the residents? There was an uh, availability for residents and the, my clients were there at, at Lincoln on Monday night and Fitch on Tuesday night. Really, and how was that um, advertised. advertised to the residents? Facebook. And we had also, the prior summer, similar plans were presented. We had larger showings at those, at those meetings. So what you have on the screen right now is John Fitch Elementary School. It's the overall site is approximately a little over 20 acres. We're proposing 180 total units on this site, uh, which comes down to a density of uh, 8.75 dwelling units per acre. Uh, there are three staple types of uh, housing products that are part of the McGrath Homes uh, development. You have quad units, you have senior flats, and you have uh, apartments. Um, so I'm going to point to you. These are, the, these are the quads, and they are essentially townhomes uh, placed in the manner of, uh, of a square with four units per, per building. Um, each of the units takes entrance from a shared driveway, and then there's uh, parking there, and they have individual entrances from the outdoors into their individual units. Uh, we're proposing 60 total units of quads on this particular site. So you can count them four for each uh, building all the way around, and they serve the exterior of the site here. Uh, the next building product is the senior flats, and these are essentially stacked townhomes. Um, they are uh, individual entrances from the outside, there's either five or six units on the first floor and five or six units on the second floor, depending on the building type. Um, so there's a two-story building. Uh, all the entrances are on the first floor. Either you go into the, into the unit or you go up a set of stairs to the other units. Uh, and then you have here what are classified as the senior residences or senior apartments. Those are two-story apartment buildings, so they're, in essence, very similar to the, the flats. The only difference being... Uh, that they all take entrances like a traditional apartment building from a common hallway as opposed to individual entrances uh, from the outside. So you go in, you would go up an elevator or go down a common hallway, and there's a combination of one and two bedroom units here. Of the 72 units that are proposed, we have 48 one bedrooms and 24 two bedrooms in this particular. Um, as you see, they're located along here uh, in proximity. They provide a buffer. Uh, with the stream that is here. Uh, so we thought it felt, we felt from a, from a layout perspective, laying these up, there's no, this is the rear of the building, so everybody's going to be going in this way. You get a nice uh, natural buffer with the stream uh, from the residential area to, to this side of the project. Um, the amenities that are proposed for this project, 
Uh, there's a clubhouse and pool and bocce court. Those are located right here. Um, there are two entrances to the property, one off of Greenbrook Drive and another off of Short Lane. And the entire property has a 15-foot Class A buffer that goes around all exterior roads. And a Class A buffer uh, under your ordinance is the, uh, the largest type of buffer, uh, and it provides one canopy tree per 40 feet plus one evergreen tree per 60 feet or one flowering tree per 40 feet plus one evergreen tree per 60 feet. So that is going to be provided along all of the exterior property lines uh, along the property. Uh, as for parking, there are 389 total parking spaces associated with the project. It goes to, that calculates to a little over 2.1 parking spaces per dwelling unit. It's a combination of uh, what I call perpendicular on-street parking, which is located here, uh, parking in the parking lots, uh, or also the parking for the quads in their driveways are calculated as part of that use. Uh, as part of this project also, the applicant is proposing to relocate the playground and basketball court that are on the township property and create or build new ones and dedicate those to the township for public use. Finally, another element of the conditional use application and discussion with township staff, I know there's been a concern about the existing school buildings. So as part of that approval process, uh, the applicant is agreeing to promptly demolish the schools uh, upon conditional use approval. We're looking at somewhere between two to four months from approval to get the permits and have that work completed. And that's something that we would be agreeable to as a condition of the conditional use approval, understanding there's, a, uh, there's been concern with vandalism and, and other issues in the community there. And we would work with township staff to make sure uh, the site is secure and stabilized and done in a proper manner. So that's kind of a high level overview of John Fitch, I'm happy to move on to Abraham Lincoln. Bob, do you wanna pull that up? Through the chair. So I have a number of questions concerning the John Fitch site, sure, if you I wanna, may. Yeah, sure, can we pull Fitch back up there? So um, first let me preface by saying that um, as a member of the Planning Commission, I totally understand the advantages to having um, this in our township. It removes the eyesore of the John Fitch School. It provides tax rateables. And we couldn't um, do any better than have products by McGrath and by Chris Levins. Excellent product. But as a resident who lives right there, I mean right there, I have questions. So the neighborhood has given me some of the questions. Sure. And if, if you could answer them, so, it, you know, put us to ease a little bit about the project. Absolutely. Okay, the first thing was in the zoning ordinance, um, you, in the amendment, you want to delete all, all references to floodplain soils, correct? Sure, yes. But there's a letter from Bucks County Planning Commission which addresses that. And what they say on page four of their letter is that um, the protection of floodplain and floodplain soils can have a direct effect on the health, welfare, and safety of the community. The protection standards are there to improve water quality, and it's strongly recommended that these standards not be compromised. So my question to you is, what does that mean concerning the health of the existing neighborhood residents, right, number one, and what does it mean in regards to water quality? Sure, so the language that Bucks County Planning Commission was reviewing is not the language that is currently proposed in the ordinance right now. They were okay. reviewing an ordinance, I believe it was probably a year ago, and at that time, one of the major, as I mentioned, one of the major hurdles in figuring out these developments is taking three different properties uh, that have different characteristics and different features and crafting an ordinance that applies to all of them. Okay. Primarily, the biggest, the most difficult of those properties was George Washington, which is constrained by the floodplain. Okay. And that 
through all of, you know, Fitch and Lincoln are a lot closer in, in size, but uh, just the, the, the constraints on the site they have there. Uh, when we started looking at including George Washington into the development, it threw the ordinance completely out of whack and provided a lot of uh, inconsistencies. And that draft ordinance that Bucks County Planning Commission was reviewing included some language that basically said uh, the floodplain regulations would not be applicable to a development of an AA community. Okay. And both township staff and Bucks County Planning Commission said that's not going to work for us. Uh, that's not a good idea. What we have in the current ordinance in deleting the term floodplain soils is not going to change necessarily much of the regulation. The floodplain soils term in the zoning ordinance is kind of a holdover term uh, from about 2010, 2012, if you all remember when uh, the floodplain ordinance was modified pursuant to FEMA. Okay. They came in and said every township has to adopt this new model ordinance. And if you adopt, if you don't adopt it, your township residents aren't going to be able to get flood insurance through the national program. And they put in all of these requirements, and a lot of townships, including Bristol, elected to take a lot of the floodplain requirements out of the zoning ordinance and put them in a standalone chapter. And that's what happened here in this township. But the term floodplain soils still was kind of a, a holdover from that. Okay. And it's caused, I think, more administrative headaches and, and Kurt, Samantha, and Bob can speak to that more than I can, but an applicant would be, not just this project, any project would be required to get a variance to uh, disturb floodplain soils when the same floodplain soils were being regulated by the standalone floodplain ordinance. So this is taking an administrative issue out. It's still regulated. The floodplain ordinance still controls. It regulates a lot of these things. It's just not going to be in the zoning ordinance um, so that and a variance would be required for some of these projects. Okay, so particular to that project, mm -hmm. there's no health issue that could occur in the drinking water of the surrounding residents. Not associated with this development. Right. Okay, not in, not associated with your project. Is right. What, correct. Is what you're saying. Correct. Okay. Um, the setbacks on the rear yards. So you want to change that a little bit on the zoning amendment also, correct? Right. So so, ex so here's my question. From the rear yard furthest, the patio furthest out, right? So you're talking any on the, one of the On the patios. quads you're talking on about, On the right. quads, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So if we go from where their patio ends, right? How much more land than from where their patio ends do they go back? So there's a 25 foot setback from the property line to the yard for the patio. That's not, now there's still, depending on which unit, there's going to be a little, there may be some space, some additional space between the patio and the end of the quad lot. But at worst, it's 25 feet. Okay. And then. At have, worst or at best? Or at, at worst, it's 25 feet. Okay. That's the, that's the minimum setback. Um, and then you have, as part of that 25 feet, there's a required 15 foot class A buffer. Then you have the property line. Yeah, excuse me, Matt, would you be so kind as to use your pointer to as you're speaking at that so sure. the viewing audience can see what you're talking about? So they have their property line. So then let's go from their property line to Greenbrook Drive. So, right. How much? So there's a 15, I think it's a 15 foot right of way before you hit the curb line for Greenbrook Drive. And then the right of way width of Greenbrook Drive is 58 feet. Right. Okay. So from the, from Greenbrook Drive so here, perimeter to the end of their property where the buffer would be is 15 feet. So you have, if you're talking about a house on this side of the street, they yes. have 60 feet to the end of the curb on Greenbrook Drive. Then they have 15 feet of township right of way then a 25 foot setback. So you'd be 75 feet, uh, I'm almost confused. 100 feet. So right here if, is. If, if their patio goes to, say they have their patio, right? Correct. And then their property line goes out a bit more. So from the end of their patio, uh, the end of their property line mm -hmm. to the edge of Greenbrook Drive, not on the other side of Greenbrook Drive, no, but 40, 40 feet, 40 feet at minimum. 
It's 40 feet? 25 feet to the, uh, my, my client's property line, and then a 15 foot right of way before you hit actual paving on Greenbrook Drive. And oh. in some instances it's more. So for instance, this area here, there's, a, there's more than 40 feet there. Why, why was I interpreting it as it was 15 feet? There's a 25 foot rear setback. 15 of that is the class A buffer. That's gonna be the tree planting, I'm oh, sorry. Um, but you have 25 feet between the property line and the quad units. Matt, Matt sorry to interject. Sure. Some of the confusion, the fact that some of the patios on the current plan are shown within the setback, and that was a review comment? That, that is a review comment, yeah. And I think there's maybe 11 or 12 approximate patios that are within that setback. Uh, and we're working to either figure out a way to relocate those or provide a, a, an additional provision in the ordinance okay. to allow okay. for that. Kathy, to answer yeah. your question, we can say, I believe, with confidence that at least 40 feet would be provided from the edge of the, the, edge of the street to, to the nearest property. patio as the okay. ordinance is currently written. Currently written. The proposed ordinance. The proposed, proposed or the, proposed. the new ordinance? Right. Uh, the proposed. The new. Okay, so it'd be, it would be 40 feet actually from their patio line to the street? Yes, and okay. 15 feet of that is the width of the required landscape buffer. The width, not the length. Correct. Correct. Okay, got the it. Length is measured by the density of the trees that Matt reviewed. How many trees per linear foot of its length? Right, because when, when I was reading it, I was incorrect then, because I was reading that the street to the property line ranged to 15 feet, but you're saying it's much greater than 15 feet. It's from our property line, 25 feet, and then you have 15 of township owned right away. Yeah, remember that the curb line of the street is not the right of way, the public <coughs> right of way, but the setback from a patio, from a building, is right. measured from a, an imaginary right of way line. Okay. So looking at the actual plan and, 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 and answering your specific question of the measurement from the curb line existing to the nearest patio or structure, it's approximately 40 feet. Okay. Okay. Um, then let's get into the buffer. Sure. So the buffer, you want that amended in the zoning ordinance also, am I correct or no? No, I think we're keeping the same buffer requirement that was previously there, which was a class A buffer, which is the the best buffer the township has in their ordinance requirements. Okay, so I guess my question would be, as you drive Greenbrook Drive, Farmbrook Drive, and Field Lane, okay, mm -hmm. we will be looking at the back of these homes. So I assume, I, Am I correct that you're planning on planting a canopy tree, an evergreen, a canopy and evergreen with the 40 and the 60 foot? Correct. So it would seem to me that that would be until they grow in, very sporadic, like their backyards are going to be totally open to along those drives. So this leads into a concern that I have because residents now, when you drive Farmbrook Drive, Greenbrook Drive, Field Lane, people only park on the one side of the street. They park on the side where their houses are located. There's no houses on the other side. It gives a, a nice wide berth to go through. If these backyards have this sp sporadic buffer that isn't going to grow in for, let's face it, a couple years, and they're gonna be wide open like that. What is to prevent the residents of this development to park if they have a quad around the perimeter of um, a field lane, really, and Greenbrook Drive, so and walk into the back? Because sure. 
that's a no for me. <laughs> so <laughs> to be honest with you. I think the buffer first off is gonna be a lot more filled in than you think, and we can certainly work with township staff. We the class A buffer is what's required in the township, but we can find a way to even beef that up a little bit. But the quads, they have their own driveways. Uh, I get that, but also too, I mean with the age listen, it's 55 or over, mm -hmm. one resident. Correct. I could buy one and I could have two 19 year olds move in with me and their friends could come over and we could be having a party. And we could park on the perimeter outside and walk right through the backyard. Worst case scenario, I know, but again, bear with me, as a resident who lives right there and stares at it, that would be a concern. So St. Joe's has a wonderful wrought iron, black wrought iron fencing that goes around, and granted they're on New Falls Road, but would that or could that be a consideration surrounding that perimeter? Well, sure, no, I mean, I think that we can look at potential fencing. I, I think you're not gonna have the people parking on those roads and going into the back. I mean, you're gonna have, they have their own driveways, there's width on the roads there to park on those internal driveways more likely, including overflow parking in these parking lots. I mean, we're looking at two spaces a unit, over two spaces a unit. So the, the intent is for the development to be self-sufficient from a parking perspective. Uh, and it wouldn't need to overburden the existing residential roads in the neighborhood. But I guess I was just saying, would a would the wrought iron fencing be appropriate in that area? Or, I mean, it's very attractive at St. Joe's, the ones out front. I mean, just a thought. I would certainly understand what you're saying, but I'm a little against putting all fence. If, if we added some fence and accented the whole drive, do, if you ever see where they do it, like a, it's called a beauty berm, you know, where you get a little, starts going up and you put plantings off the fence. So we mm -hmm. do, segments of maybe 100 feet of fence and then a beauty berm and then 100 feet of fence. I'm, I'm okay with that, you know? Okay. Because you don't have the grades to put like a high berm probably. And it is a class A buffer and it's a pretty substantial cost and it's it's important to me. We feel like we built a pretty nice product and uh, uh, I, we want to make it, we want to make it private. I you agree know? 100%, but yeah. again, um, as a, as a resident there and trying to yeah. think about what concerns um, the residents could have. Some of those residents did have that concern. Yeah. I've lived there 40 years, and in 40 years I can tell you that people have parked on the other yeah. side maybe less than five times, a, a sporadic well, car here and there. So that is definitely a concern that yeah, they we'll have. Yeah, we'll meet with our engineers and maybe draw something up and yeah, uh, yeah. see how the, everything works for our engineers too, you know? <laughs> I think so, we can, uh, yeah. that's it. Yeah. I think we can make a commitment to work with staff, with Kurt's office to come up with the, you know, we have to provide uh, more detail on the buffer. It's one of the review comments anyway. So mm -hmm. we can provide that detail uh, consistent with what you're looking for with some fence and berming to really prevent people from coming through that. Um, hold on, because I think you've answered a lot of these things. Um, traffic impact study. Is that gonna be done? Because the reality is, again, from my point of view, my street has 25 homes on it. 25 homes and 25, uh, and, you know, and cars in front of 25 homes. Now, if that's gonna have 180 homes and I even max my street to 30, that is like putting six streets into that area of homes or of units. Mm -hmm. And that would be, when I look at it, I look at the number of cars that in that unit. So six streets that are existing in the development now, Greenbrook, have 12 in and outs, opening at each end of the street, right? That will have two in and outs and you know, the, the, the traffic is gonna be circulating right there. Um, so, I guess when, 
I, I think about that much cars in there. That's why I just keep thinking that they're going to put overflow parking on that perimeter on Greenbrook Drive. And that's, again, why the fence is or, or something is very important to ensure, you know, whether it's no parking signs from the township or whatever, but to ensure that that doesn't become overflow parking from this. Sure. So uh, a couple of things in response. A traffic impact study was uh, prepared and submitted and reviewed by your traffic engineer, and I think they've had no additional comments on it. Okay. Um, from a parking perspective, we're parked at some around 2.2 units or 2.2 parking spaces per unit. From a developer's perspective, what we feel is ample is around 1.3 to 1.5. So at 2.2, we feel there's plenty of parking uh, on site to handle all of this development. Now you remember, uh, as a 55 plus community, you're not gonna have and it's not. It's more than likely that not every resident's going to have their own car. You're going to have uh, individuals who multiple residents of an individual unit have one vehicle. Uh, most of them are retired, so they're not leaving at peak times. We don't have to go that road. I've already been to St. Joe's, mm -hmm. nighttime, different days, and weekends. The driveways are packed. The streets are packed. The parking is packed. So, 55 isn't. 62, do you, you know what I mean? Right. Th there's going to be cars, there's going to be traffic, so we don't even have to Th there go. There are, and, but, and part of the traffic study looked at the traffic of a 55 plus development versus a traditional single family development. And the conclusion, which I think the tra township traffic engineer agreed with, was this would be less of a traffic burden than what else could be, than what other lives could be developed on this site. Okay. Um, traffic engineer, I mean, um, sure. Yeah. You want to go? So, um, now if you don't mind, Sure, no, happy to. Our other applicant is here. Um, so we certainly appreciate your your consideration, Matt. Yep. No, happy to be he always lets old guys go ahead. So. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, thank you. And Thanks, Matt, for the consideration. Um, I'm Ed Murphy. I'm here tonight on behalf of the... Uh, so, Ed, let me start you off, please. Right. Thank you. Um, so, the uh, presentation we're doing now is land development. This is for Genesis Industrial LLC, 2439 Corsa Road, Hamilton, New Jersey, requesting preliminary and final land development approval in order to construct an addition to the existing building located at 128 Wharton Road, Bristol, PA, tax parcel number 5-19-78-003 in a P-1 planned industrial zone district of Bristol Township. Right. Uh, I'm Ed Murphy. I'm here tonight on behalf of the applicant. Good evening, Ed. We have representatives of the applicant and our site works engineers uh, here tonight if we need them, but... Uh, I think Chairman fairly summarized what's happening here. Uh, our lot is a little less than five acres. On it today is about a 55,000 square foot manufacturing facility. Uh, what's being proposed is we'd like to build an addition of about 29,000 square feet. Uh, what happens here at the plant is they make, fabricate uh, medical supplies and component parts for COVID tests. So as you might imagine, there's been a big demand for additional COVID tests. So that's pretty much the fuel that's driving this particular addition. So in the normal course, we did go to the Zoning Hearing Board previously and got some items of zoning relief. But in t tonight, as you indicated, Mr. Chairman, we're here tonight for the preliminary and final land development plan depicting that 28,000, 20, almost 29,000 square foot addition. We've seen the Gilmore review. We've seen the Pannoni review have no real issues with those reviews. Uh, we do have the updated waiver list that was submitted. And I think unless Sam or Kurt or Bob think there's anything else to talk about, if we need to go through the waivers, we can. But I think they're probably all supported, but uh, you guys can comment. So, Ed, for the, for the record, uh, and thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, yes, we, we um, do require you go through the waiver okay. list and, and the numbers associated with them for a record, please. 
Sure. Uh, the first one is section 17714, which would otherwise require a separate submission of the uh, preliminary and final plans we're proposing to combine them both. And the answer is? Uh, you can just go right, you can just go right. Just go, we list. won't go one at a time. Go right through your list. Yeah, we don't have You're good, so. All right, uh, the second one is section 17735A, 17743, and 17766. Uh, we're, we're seeking a waiver of installing sidewalks uh, along Warden Road because none exist now. Third, uh, a waiver from section 17740F requiring driveways to be 24 feet. We have an existing driveway of 20.4, not 24 feet. Um, so we'd like to maintain the existing width of the existing driveway. Uh, the next one is section 17741F uh, requiring, that's a capital F as opposed to the one before, which was a small F lowercase f, uh, requires no less than 15 feet of open space between the curb and the nearest building. Um, we, we would propose 13.8 instead of the uh, full 15. Uh, the next one, section 17741K, uh, we're asking that we don't curb this, the existing parking lot. We have curb stops and we think that's worked for years and we'd prefer to just keep that, maintain that same approach. The next, section 17748D3, uh, we'd like to do some grading closer than five feet uh, to the property lines to enable us to install the rain garden outlet and uh, access to remove some paving that exists too close to the, to the side line. Uh, next, 17755F1A, uh, re that section talks about the minimum dimension for loading bursts of 14 feet wide by 55 length. We have 12 feet wide and 55 length, which is what the size of the current loading bursts in the facility are now. We'd like to maintain that. And then lastly, I think, if I'm right, is 17755F1B, um, which is the loading berth spaces. We have 10 feet by 33 feet for the smaller trucks as opposed to the larger ones. And there are three other ones on the next page. Kurt or Sam, if there's any others, I think that's the updated list. Are three um, there are three additional waivers for the plan requirements. If you would like this, you could. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind. Um, 17791A1 and 17792A1 talks about the scale of the plan. We want to do it a scale that Kurt and Sam can read as opposed to what the ordinance says. Um, <laughs> next, section 17791C3 and 17792C3 uh, talks about having to provide detailed facilities, showing all the facilities within 200 feet of the site. Typically what we do is provide an aerial and, and that has historically been significant or sufficient and I think would be in this case. And then lastly, uh, sort of the same theme 17791 C5, 17792 C5, that requires all underground utilities uh, be located and, and we've shown them based on prior plans and information and I think that has also been uh, satisfactory to Gilmore and Bob. Okay, thank you Ed. Um, Commissioners, you've heard the presentation. I would entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. I make the motion to recommend to Council uh, Genesis Industrial LLC, 2439 Cooser Road, Hamilton, New Jersey, requesting preliminary and final land development approval in order to construct an addition to the existing building located at 128 Wharton Road, Bristol, Pennsylvania, Tax parcel 5-19-78-003 and a P-1 plan industrial zone district um, with all of the waivers granted. And subject to our continued compliance with the review waivers. Correct. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I will second that. It's been moved and second. Any comments or questions on the motion?
Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Great. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the consideration. Have a good night. Goodbye. Uh, Ed, if you could ask the, um, thank you very much. Matt, thank you again uh, for allowing us to do that, uh, letting the other applicant come in. So if you want to continue. Sure. I think Kathy may have I, more questions. I do. And I'm Kathy, so sorry. If, if I can just, on your last point on the parking, we were talking outside about St. Joe's, and the parking count there is somewhere between 1.3 spaces per dwelling unit to 1.5, and here it's going to fetch, it's going to be 2.2. .2. So you have a significant greater par parking ratio than what you had at um, at St. Joe's, so hopefully. Okay. <clears throat> um, uh, offhand, and I, and I know it's not part of the presentation, but pricing, is there, are you able to say in a ballpark range what the prices might be? If you're not, that's fine. I was just wondering. Yeah, we're going to be in the range of between 300 and 400. Thousand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the apartments for the rentals for them? They're going to range between probably 1700 and 2150 2300 Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And then the HOA, there's an HOA fee, right? Yeah. That would, okay. Got it. We haven't figured that out yet. But yeah, yeah. No problem. Um, another question. Um, Mr. McGrath, so when the homes are all sold and the only thing that is remaining is the apartments, do you have a property management firm that's under your umbrella that yes. handles that yep. or do you mm -hmm. take yeah. that out to somebody else? No, we, we manage the apartments. Yeah. Okay. So they would it's stay. It's like we did St. Joe's. My daughter did a, does a lot of that. And, okay. Uh, yeah, and my son too. Okay. And my son-in-law. Okay. Thank you so members. much. Um, I guess. Oh, oh, here we go. Sorry. Again, if if you if you lived right there, you guys would have the same questions. Um, the guardhouse is that a man guardhouse? Is that a key card guardhouse, or is just just is there no it did say guardhouse in here or yeah, it's like a it's more of a architectural landscape feature, landscape feature. okay so n no man and there's no nobody sitting in it there in. may be a gate that'll be up um but it, that's not going to be necessarily preventing access okay okay got it huh. oh <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Well, you now, now the real presentation is started. It has a lot of detail. Oh, turn it this way. I, 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 turn it this way, she says. The, the pictures um, actually add to the positivity of the, of the uh, presentation. And I guess my last question is sidewalks. Yep. So it's kind of like this. Why aren't there going to be sidewalks over there when there are sidewalks on the other side? There are sidewalks proposed throughout the neighborhood. No, I mean on the perimeter. On the, on the outside? Yes. Well, first off, that's township right away. We don't own that property. Uh, it's not part of our property line, um, but the intent for the development, the zoning ordinance requirement is to make an internal circulation system that then connects to the neighborhood, which we have at the entrance points here. 
that w will then walk and bike ride and do whatever on, on the roads and the sidewalks in that existing neighborhood. So there, but are you saying that there can be no sidewalks put around the development because that's township right. property? Right, so do you guys want to address that? The, the question is whether perimeter sidewalk around the on outside, the outside. Right, so streets. there's gonna be that 15 foot buffer. Obviously you're not gonna put sidewalk in the buffer. Um, I think the question is on the other side along the, the road. I, I, we're talking about just a standard sidewalk along the street in the right of way. Right. Distant streets. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the question is. That is the question because okay. the, so there are sidewalks. Can you provide sidewalks there if requested by? If it's, it, I don't think it's been requested, but we can certainly look at it. Um, and they can look at the connect. I think the ordinance. There, there is an ordinance requiring mm -hmm. in Salda that requires okay. curb if sidewalk it, along. Okay. Uh, and then the only other, I think, does that count against our impervious? If, if it's in the right of way, then probably, probably not. not. Okay, so we just got to look at that. I know there's an ongoing, there's going to be an ongoing discussion with the township engineering staff regarding additional sidewalks. So. Yeah, because you're requesting a waiver from sidewalks and curbing. Right, and that was, to a certain extent, a partial waiver. And part of that constraint, when you'll hear on the, on the land development review, is there's a 60% impervious surface requirement. We're at 59.6%, mm -hmm. so we'd have to look into either increasing that requirement or see where those, but so that's something that's been called out by Gilmore and Associates, and we're happy to continue that dialogue with them to figure out where the appropriate opportunities are for additional sidewalk. Okay. And that would be um, the end of my questions, and thank you so much for um, clarifying different things on there. I mean, and I'm sure uh, that you would agree as a resident, you know, it's it's natural to have that concern, especially in a project that's so large. I certainly understand. It, like I said, it's taken us the better part of, of two years to really refine these projects, and there's a lot of moving details and intricacies. So we welcome all the questions, and we're happy to, you know, do whatever we can to try to improve it. Okay. Is there... Anybody else on the commission that has questions on Fitch? I mean, I, I don't want to jump to, to, I think, to Lincoln. I think, I, uh, <laughs> covered I think most they're of them. covered. Yeah, I think we, we've we, got them all. Yeah, we oh. kind of we kind of put that in her ballpark because sure. she lives right there, so she knows most of the issues. She did a great job. Issues. Um, um, so, we wanna, so let me ask, does anybody in the audience have any questions? Yes. I have a question. I have uh, one on that. If, if you... <laughs> You have to get up and identify yourself. <laughs> Hi, you Mom. Didn't. Hi, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Cindy Murphy. Uh, Dogwood Drive, 317. Uh, you mentioned the um, recreation area. Yes. Where do, where's it going? Right up here. Where it is now. Right, but you took some away from it. So where's, right. the, where's the balance of it going? So there's a, a land... Oh, sorry. So th Thanks. there's a, a land swap that was proposed in the initial development plans uh, where part of township owned property would be transferred to the developer uh, and he and the developer would agree to construct uh, this area in lieu of transferring additional property uh, to the township at George Washington Elementary uh, and constructing a softball field there. So that's where the obligation for that comes in and that's in the process of being documented. Thank you. So through the chair, yes, just so that I can clarify to the viewing audience um, again, uh, the people that have asked me to look into this. There was three, over three Point, acres right. that was the existing playground and ball field. Correct. That is going to be... Point five. Point five. Point, point six, I believe it is. Um, point, point six one two, yes. Yes, to be accurate, mm -hmm. is now going to be the size of the playground. So that other acreage is being put into this development shortening the playground area Cor and shortening that f for the township residents. I cannot speak to if kids play there now. Mm. I, I can say they do at the basketball court, but I can't say what they do on the playground. But I just want to make it noted that it is a concession from the playground into um, <clears throat> this area, which is why 
asking for certain other concessions like the um, decorative fencing sporadically or, you know, no parking or, or different other things. There's, you know, it's kind of a give and take, right? Yep. Um, so, so I, I just clarified that. <laughs> thank you, Kathy. So that kind of <clears throat> gets my mind working a little bit. I mean, the fact that the neighbor's children use that park now, uh, which is, as I understand correctly, Kathy? I, mean, um, the, I can't speak to that too much because it, on the weekends, yes, but I can't speak to it Monday through Friday because yeah, I'm not there. But on the weekends, they do. And the fact, the fact that it's, the, fact that it's uh, you know, the size that it is now and it's going to be reduced to 1.6, whatever it was. 0.6, yeah. And uh, thank you. Um, and yet your this development is going to be so huge, and I'm sure you may have children in there, I'm guessing. No, there's no children allowed. No children? No. None at all? Only yeah, so if I can explain the, the age restriction. Yes. you got to have at least one person who is 55 and older. Right. Uh, and you can't have anybody under the age of 19 gotcha. residing there. Okay. Well, so they can reside for there for not more three than, months. Not more than three no months, longer correct. No more than three months. And, and that's a... Uh, that's a virtue of the of the federal ha the Fair Housing Act federal legislation, so that you don't provide for discriminatory housing. Um, so that's a standard uh, restriction for 55 plus housing. Okay. But I did want to have John talk briefly because there's some improvements being made to the playground. It's not. I, I, in all honesty, I don't think smalling that playground is is a negative. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't. I was just bringing that up to say yeah, that there important. could be other Here's concessions you make. Out. My wife and I out a couple nights on the playground when people were there. The kids and the ki and the parents are using it. We're going to replace it with a new uh, playground uh, stuff there, a slide and all that to, to the new standards. And also the, bas the half-court basketball court right. because that's important to the kids in that neighborhood. Um, I said, well, you have a brand new double full court down in the next section down. He goes, no, it's perfect here because they don't get to use it because people from all over come to the one down off Mill Creek in the, where the George Washington School is. So yeah. Yeah. we're going to redo the basketball court also. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Oh, did you have? Oh, so, uh, I, I'm Barbara Bill, Sorry. Drexel, <laughs> you all know that. But anyway, I live in Drexelwood, and we had all these handicap area, you know, every street has the handicap walkways, and all the people walk in the street. Nobody uses those handicap walkways. They walk with their children. I mean, I, we don't have anybody in uh, wheelchairs, but nobody uses those things. I I watch them and I'm thinking, you're all walking in the street and you complain if you get hit, but <laughs> it's like, it makes me angry. We don't need more sidewalks because they're not using them and it's an expense. So, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Yes, because it bothered me as I passed along that. Anyone else? Gals? Wait for her to finish. Sometimes it takes a while. Uh, Kathy, I appreciate your input. Um, Gallus Over, I live on Freedom Lane. Yep. And I'm a spit from that place. Uh, it's been an eyesore for a while. I'm uh, wholeheartedly behind this project. I think it'll be great for the neighborhood. As far as the usage goes that you're talking about now, uh, that play area for the kids has been a central source for maintenance for the township. There's been a lot of vandalism in there. There's kids hang out there at night because there's a street light on. But the basketball court is utilized uh, more than the playground for the kids. I'm by there every day. I get done work half day. I drive by there and uh, not very much use for the playground, although there are some, but there's more need for the basketball court. I agree 100%. Uh, we fought a while ago to try and get that lit off of uh, 
our township lighting source, and they use it at night, even though it says the park closes at dusk. Uh, the other thing to consider is uh, that was named after the fireman. That's a fireman's park. Originally, it was supposed to be a policeman's park. That other they got swapped somehow. Uh, so you might want to consider the naming convention uh, when it goes back up, new and improved. Thanks. Thank you, Gallo. Any other questions or comments from the audience? I, I, I just have a question because, Gauss, I, I respect what you say. Do you, as driving by there, though, do you understand what I was saying about the um, nobody ever parks on that other side? Absolutely. Now? And the, the reason is, I think, because there are no sidewalks there now. It was never meant for kids to walk there. They're to use the other side and then use the crosswalks where the guards are. Uh, the crosswalks are still painted there. Uh, I understand what you're talking about, but I, I've seen the St. Joe's, and I've seen how he's laid it out with the uh, rolling knolls around the roads. And if I'm 55, 55, 65, I'm not really interested in hacking my way through to my patio from the road, oh, yeah. through the trees and the bushes. So I'd rather just drive right around to the driveway and go in the front door that way. Although I, I can't say it, it won't happen, uh, but I find it doubtful. And also it'd be another maintenance headache for them, weed whacking around that fence. And, you know, so it's, it's going to get buried in the, in the foliage, I think, if you do put it up there. But I understand what you're talking about. Well, I have seen uh, other developments where they've had those berms with the trees and and, um, and the, the foliage, the hills and whatnot, as much as they could. And instead of uh, a standard kind of a fence, they just use the uh, uh, country farm fences where pieces just go like this. Foot rails. Every, and, and it kind of, it is a yeah. deterrent for people to have to cross over them. Well, that's a good food, point. Food yeah. for thought. That Robert. no one brought up because... Most older folks have little dogs and pets, so I'm sure they're going to fence those back properties. Okay, well. Um, in the current ordinance, it talks to no fences within the buffer. Um, or in the front yard setback, so it has to be without side of those areas, um, therefore the fence would be as shown right at their patio. Right. So that would have to be something um, that would have to be conditioned upon no fencing, but I don't know what their HOA allows, so. Yeah, I have a question. So that would be another impediment from cutting through there, so. Yeah, I, I think we're happy to, to look at it. Would, would, a, would, a fence prevent, pre, would a fence present a fire hazard? I'd have to defer to the fire marshal, but I imagine he's using the, the main roads unless there's high, I mean, we're gonna have hydrants in these developments to begin with. So I don't think he's gonna need access to any of the other hydrants, but I, I would defer to them if they have an issue with fencing. But if that's the case, then we're happy to alternate and try to find some other solutions. I think there's a lot of different ways to get what the intent of what you're trying to accomplish is. Or possibly some arborvitaes in between the uh, shade trees and the, the evergreens. Yeah, I mean, and I think that's something, add more you know, we've got, to add, we've got to provide some additional detail to Gilmore about what's going to be the content of that buffer. And I think I'm sure one of their comments is in addition to this is what the Class A buffer requires, but there may be some opportunities to, to bulk that up a little bit and provide some more actual buffering. I think we're open to that as well. Okay, moving right along. Kathy, do you have anything else? I have nothing else. Okay. Do you want to? Oh. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't see the person in the back. Are we discussing all three or just this one as a model? I believe we're discussing all three. Okay, just as a general statement, I just wanted to 
mention that um, since I don't want to talk any longer than I have to, uh, 1.8 million projected revenue to the uh, school district annually. That enables us to uh, keep taxes way down. We've been doing a pretty good job. Township's been doing a good job. And since I'm on the school board, that's one of the reasons why I'm in favor of it. So, thank you. Thank you. And yes, did you have a comment in the question? Thank you. Thank you. My name is Heather Parker. I live at 8 Grove Lane. And um, my concern would be that since there is limited um, main roads into our development, um, there are straightaways. Is there any way that there would be some kind of a speed bump that would control traffic so it doesn't become a raceway for the existing residents in the, uh, like on Greystone? It's a main, is that Greystone that's across the top? That's a straightaway. So you have two entrances off of Mill Creek. So who's to say they're not gonna come from all these in Poland and then come down Greystone? I can't wait to get to my house and put my groceries away. And then, you know, and I know there are children on that street. So I know there are stop signs, but I don't know if um, putting some kind of a, a speed bump would help our neighborhood with traffic. Thank you. Um, Kurt, Thank you. would you like to address that? So uh, the township has had uh, similar issues raised even without proposed development, just in Levittown roadways and cut-throughs and cars traveling fast. And uh, I would suggest that if there is now or there would be a issue in the future with traffic or traffic calming, I mean, I, on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, the township's uh, able to do an en enforcement and or you know you can always review and implement certain traffic calming as was recommended, but on a case by case basis. But I, I would start if, if there if there is an issue created, uh, and I'm not sure just looking at where this home is located if it'll end up being an issue or not. But um, we could always handle it as a, a matter later on. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, hearing none. Matt, if you want to continue. Sure. Uh, Bob, if you want to put up the Lincoln development plan, and I'll just try to hit the, the highlights of this one. Uh, obviously, it's going to be developed under the same proposed zoning ordinance for John Fitch. Uh, this particular site is just a shade under 10 acres. Uh, we're proposing 89 total units here, um, which is comes out to a little bit under nine dwelling units an acre, 8.9. Uh, you'll notice there are no quads proposed for this development. Our original proposal uh, included quads, but in an effort to comply with the open space requirements, uh, those are the larger of the housing types, we removed all of those, um, which significantly reduced our unit count and provided a lot more green space. Um, so we have uh, 41 of the senior flats. They're located here, here, and here, uh, four buildings. Uh, three 10 unit buildings, five and five, and then one five on the bottom, six on the top. And then uh, two of the luxury residence apartment buildings, 24 units each. Uh, again, two story uh, buildings, very similar to the flats with the exception of that they have the common hallway entrance as opposed to the entrance directly from the outdoors. Uh, this particular development proposes a clubhouse and a pool as amenities. There's a single entrance to the development for public or for entrance uh, at Plum Tree Place, but we also have an emergency exit here, uh, which connects to Plum Ridge Way. Again, uh, a 15 foot uh, class A buffer around the exterior of the property. Uh, because of the use of the senior flats here, there's you know significant setbacks. So there's some opportunity there and we'll work with the township about uh, what that buffer is going to look like. It'll comply with a class A buffer, but there may be opportunities for extra there. Uh, you'll see it's got 2.92 total acres of open space. Uh, as with the John Fitch plan, if you notice though, not everything that is green is considered open space. There's a very restrictive open space requirement. It's got to have uh, 30 feet of width and 20,000 square feet before it counts as open space. So the hatched areas on this plan show the open space, but there's a lot of green areas and yards and near the buildings which don't meet those requirements which are proposed to be maintained green. Um, so you have almost three acres of accountable open space there, uh, and but really a little bit more than that. Uh, and again, similar with 
uh, neighbor Ove with John Fitch. If conditional use approval is granted, um, the, the applicant, the developer, is agreeable to uh, promptly demolishing the school. Again, looking at a you know two to four month period uh, for that to be completed to get the necessary permits and the work done. And um, so, uh, Kurt, I'm going to ask you this question. Just because we're moving in the, the way we're moving, I noticed with the with the Fitch and um, and uh, Lincoln, uh, we have waiver requests for conditional use. So, being we were doing the Fitch, right? That's the one we were doing first. Uh, I think we need to go through those waiver requests. If we want to consider the conditional use or not. Because I'm thinking, I I'm thinking that if I'm thinking that if if this amendment is approved, is and the conditional uses Yeah, it's sort of uh, there, you can skin the cat different ways. I think um that it would it would certainly make sense to go through the waivers uh, for right. Fitch if, uh, especially if you're seeking a, 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 a recommendation from Planning Commission for land development tonight. Uh, whether you do that in conjunction with your it, the order of which you want to do this, you want to talk about the conditional use now. Do you want to continue talking about the whole ball of wax, and then when you make your motion, we can tie it back to the waivers that were discussed as part of this kind of comprehensive discussion well, yeah if we it, as we proceed um, you know if the conditional uses are uh, um, if the amendment is recommended and the conditional uses are recommended they would have to be recommended individually with the waivers attached to them I couldn't make it a blanket waiver request I Correct. Don't believe Right. Yeah, you need specific waivers listed. Right. Yeah. Hey, Joe, do you want to come here? The, the issue is that for, for the record, could you identify I'm sorry, yourself? Judy Stern Goldstein with Gilmore and Associates. Thank you. The issue is with Fitch, you have a land development, so you'll make a recommendation on the waivers as you do with any other land development. And the conditional use, you'll make a motion or recommendation the way you do on any other conditional use. With Lincoln, you don't yet have a land development. So their waiver request is sort of a conceptual waiver request. As part of conditional use, they're required to identify any relief they may need or anywhere they don't comply with the existing zoning or subdivision land development ordinance. So you would be acknowledging as part of any recommendation that they need relief and that relief would have to come from the appropriate body at the appropriate time before they could have land development approval. Thank you. And we will be back before you at some point in the future for land development consideration on Lincoln. Okay. Okay, so um, moving right along. Okay. Um, do we want to go through the ordinance then? Well, you're going to do the conditional use. I think the ordinance comes first in the proceed. I mean, it kind of, I can kind of. Oh, just it, it does. It does in, in the in the in the listing of how the agenda was put together. Uh, I think have we heard enough about the conditional uses, and then we also have the sketch plan. Okay. Okay, um, yes, we'll go back to our uh, initial agenda and uh, go with the
it's sketch form, yeah. They the sketch form is pretty good. It's just a matter of how you want to do it. Okay. Because you want to go into the sketch plan. So into the sketch plan. The, the, the sketch plan, what, what the sketch plan is just, it was a, it's a review of the conditional use plan for Lincoln um, for uh, the purposes of providing additional comments as we continue to prepare our land development plan. Uh, we've reviewed those, that, that letter. Um, we are generally intend to comply with all the comments therein, uh, but ultimately it's gonna be subject to a formal land development submission that will be reviewed by Kurt's office. It'll get a new land development review letter. We'll finalize our waiver, rec our waiver requests, and then at some point in the near future, we'll be back before you for formal recommendation um, on that land development. So okay, there's so not much discussion, I think, so, on the sketch plan. And thank you, Matt. Um, so, uh, and, and that's your, certainly your prerogative in no sense to, to presenting the sketch plan because there's not, nothing we're going to really do with it. Right. I mean, and so um, I guess in your context of your review of the, similar with the conditional use for both of these items, um, really what the conditional use is, uh, is going to accomplish is it's going to kind of finalize and approve the layout of the buildings and the layout, the density, the number of units, uh, and compliance with the zoning ordinance amendment. And as long as you determine that and make a recommendation, that then triggers us into the land development process for okay. both of those pro That's why I suggested maybe going through the ordinance first, okay. because understanding what was being amended will then get the, to your compliance with the conditional use, and I think everything kind of flows from there. All right, thank you, Matt. I, I believe I yes, believe Kathy. that we understand what is being amended yeah. from the presentation okay. and from the questions that I had. Yeah, I was going to say we did, a comp I mean, a lot of what I would say in the ordinance amendment presentation was, was covered by Kathy's question. So I can streamline it and say if you have any additional questions about the ordinance, if not, we can, we can move okay. forward. So I, I, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I, I, and and uh, I don't mean to interrupt. I, I guess my thinking about processing this, you know, I, I personally I think it makes sense to go through uh, perhaps some of the items in the conditional use uh, letters and discussion, that. and I think it'd be equally beneficial to go through the waivers uh, from, ma from maybe both projects, because, you know, I think what the ultimate objective here is to get to a point where you're ready to drill down motions. Correct. And, and they could be tailored to, you know, per the waivers discussed, as discussed, or it could be per the waivers discussed, but for instance, we'd like to see the curb and sidewalk installed around the Fitch property, and therefore we don't recommend that waiver. Or like in the conditional use, I know that our recommendation was that the schools be demolished within a period of maybe 30 to 60 days, and we're hearing now two to four months. So I think you know, we used your timeline. Applications 30 to 60 days, and. Demol demolition within okay, 120. Fine, fine. I misunderstood. Yeah, so that. that's, I mean, and I guess, Kurt, to my point is, a lot of what's in your conditional use, I think, I would just characterize as a will comply. And if we don't want to, um, we don't have to talk about those specifics. If it's per in accordance with our letter, that's fine too. Um, but you know, I, I know at least with the waiver request, like that sidewalk issue was talked I, about. I, I think absolutely. That's it may the be next. beneficial to just throw that out now, and then it'll help drill down a, uh, a motion later. Okay. That being said. All right. So on the conditional use. Conditional use for. For, for both projects. Uh, we are or will comply on the review comments that have been issued by Gilmore. Um, those include, and just for the record, so I'm identifying them. Uh, I think primarily the, the main issue uh, was some conditions that were recommended by Gilmore including the demolition of the existing schools, commencing within 60 days from approval and completed with 120 days and the applicant uh, being responsible for obtaining any permits needed. And that is across all three schools, uh, Fitch, Lincoln, and Washington, those schools will be demolished upon conditional use approval of any one of these projects. Um, and then design plans for the playground uh, at John Fitch, which will be submitted to the, to, the, uh, to the township for their review and comment and approval by township staff. And similarly, design plans for uh, the proposed softball field and associated parking at George Washington. Um, so 
so uh, we're, we're going to go back to the conditional use issue because uh, in order for this commission to make a recommendation in one way or the other, um, for the record, uh, we need to have all waiver requests sure. listed. So you'll need to go through them and identify them. Yep. And then when we talk about um, the motion to recommend or not, we will, whoever makes the motion will also include the issues of the waivers. Sure, okay. understood. Um, Bob, do you want to put up uh, Fitch again? Green Book. We'll start with That's the, the, first one, the 101. Fitch waiver request. And did everybody receive a copy of our letter from today? Um, and I'll just run through them. Uh, the first waiver request is uh, a waiver from 177 subsection 14E. Uh, that requires uh, si uh, separate submissions for preliminary and final land development and, approval. And that, Matt, is for the Villas at Greenbrook? Yes, John Fitch Elementary, correct. Okay, and for, so, just for the record, we Yes, want understood, yep, yes. Thank you. Um, so we're, we're requesting a waiver to allow for a single uh, submission, preliminary and final land development plans. Um, we believe that the plans are in position to address any items and everything can be handled as a condition of uh, plan compliance before recording. So we would ask to make one single submission rather than two separate submissions. And I don't know if it's the commission's prerogative. They want to. You want me to just run through them, and do you want to comment on them one no, by you one? Need to just go through. Just go through. Them. Them? Just sure. Put their numbers in for the record. Sure. Uh, the second waiver request is uh, section one seventy seven, uh, subsection four, forty point f. Uh, this requires minimum driveway width and driveway minimum radius requirements in a Class B development. We're uh, requesting a waiver uh, to provide a 10-foot minimum driveway width and no radius for the driveways into the quads. That's where we're This is where that waiver is limited to. Uh, this is a design that's been utilized. The quads uh, John McGrath has used in a number of his developments, and this particular design has been utilized with those quads, um, and it's been uh, a safe and efficient manner and allows for access into those quad units once you see as you see once the driveway enters up then it opens up into parking spots so and there's no particular the structures at the, at the base are not uh, conflicting with and available so everyone was able to see and safely turn into those driveways um, waiver request number three 177-41 subsection c um, this prohibits angled or perpendicular parking along private streets. Uh, we're proposing uh, perpendicular parking along the private internal road. Uh, I think part of that section is mo mostly involving uh, public streets, but this is again something that uh, McGrath Homes has used in a lot of their developments, provides for additional overflow parking, uh, and the lay layout and circulation has been reviewed by your township traffic engineer and didn't note any issues. Um, so we again believe it's uh, a good use of resources on the site here to allow for additional parking. Uh, section, waiver request number four, 177, subsection 41F. Uh, this section prohibits uh, parking within 15 feet of the outside wall of the nearest building. Uh, this relates to the overflow parking for the apartment buildings um, and their location to the, to the building. Uh, there's some site constraints here we have a stormwater management facility, uh, and then the ordinance, uh, one of the key elements in designing the ordinance for these apartment buildings was maintaining a mandatory separation distance before, between the buildings. So if we were to move the parking further away, we would conflict with the stormwater management facilities, uh, or if we were to move the buildings closer, we'd be in violation of the ordinance. So that's the genesis of that waiver request. Uh, we have a request number five, uh, section 177-41, subsection P. This is uh, regarding uh, a waiver regarding uh, the 10 foot wide separation for landscaping every 20 spaces or 100 feet, 180 feet of parking in a continuous row. Again, we're providing uh, some landscaped islands, uh, but not at the interval that's required by the ordinance. Uh, again, that's something that we believe, we believe there's sufficient landscaping here. Uh, it's a partial waiver uh, and the addition of uh, additional landscape islands would further reduce the parking available for the development. Um, we're happy as part of that discussion 
to potentially look at other opportunities for landscape islands with the township engineer to find out if there's maybe a few here or there that could be added, uh, but there would still be a partial waiver request there. Uh, the next two I'm going to uh, lump together, uh, waiver request six and seven, uh, section 177, 43A and 45A, that's the, the curb and sidewalk. Uh, and as we've already had some discussion there and based on Ms. Gessel's comments, we're, we'll continue to look at that uh, with the township engineer and see if there's an opportunity to provide uh, that curbing and sidewalk and what impact it'll have on the development. Um, so we're still gonna request that waiver. We understand your position on it uh, and we'll continue to work with the township engineer on that issue. Uh, waiver request number eight, 177, subsection 48D3. This is uh, section requires that edges of slopes shall be a minimum of five feet from the property right of way lines um, without, abut without encroaching into an abutting property. This is for the stormwater management facilities located here. Um, we're gonna be, in order to provide that size of maintenance of that size of facility, we're gonna encroach into that, uh, the grading will encroach into that setback, but will not go on to the abutting property. So that's the genesis of that waiver request. Um, nine is uh, a, ver a waiver from 177, 91 C3 and 92 C3, which relates to the uh, plan information that is shown uh, within 200 feet of the site. Uh, we're providing an aerial photograph and topographical survey, uh, and we're also agreeable to providing any additional information on specific utilities or features that the township engineer requests. And finally, the last waiver is a waiver from the stormwater management ordinance uh, relating to the buffer from the stream that goes along this side of the property. Uh, it requires a 150 foot buffer from the top of the stream bank. Uh, we're proposing a 30 foot buffer from the edge of the delineated waters. Um, if you were to comply with this, it would shift the entire layout of the development uh, and push the apartment buildings uh, further into the center of the site, put the parking facing the residences. Um, so we believe that the buffer that we're providing is sufficient, provides the same protection that's necessary, and enhances the layout for uh, harmony with the adjacent residential community. So, so Kurt, Kurt or, or Sam, I wanted to ask you, Bob, this particular uh, waiver, do you, uh, make, what's your opinion with going from 150 to 30? Uh, we were actually just uh, trying to uh, recall if we've done this waiver in the past. We've done similar waivers related to wetland setbacks. Uh, from, from a practical standpoint, you know, we, we have a defined floodplain. We're not encroaching in to the floodplain. Um, you know, this area's been studied before a floodplain, I should, I should say. Uh, so effectively, it's not something that's going to uh, have any kind of natural resource impact. Uh, but again, you know, that's a requirement in, in, in the SALDA they're seeking a waiver from, so, you know, it's at the discretion of the planning commission. Okay, thank you. It certainly would have a tremendous impact on the, on the site layout proposed. Sorry? It would have a tremendous impact, not being granted that waiver. Right. It would have a okay. significant effect on the proposed development, development as, as okay. shown. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so I think what we'll do is look at the waiver request for Abraham Lincoln. Because when we do the motions, we'll do the motion for the ordinance, then we'll do the motion for the conditional uses and where they'll address the issues of the waivers. Um, uh, John, if I could interrupt. Yes. The uh, waiver requests for Lincoln are for the anticipated waivers that they may seek during preliminary final. Uh, we Thank you. Okay. See, when you become a senior, sometime you forget things. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate you got my back. But we're still happy to go through them and get feedback from you so that we know uh, sort of where we stand. That's, unless that's not necessary. Okay, understood. Because that'll be coming back again. It's going to be definitely, it will definitely be back before you. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so 
commissioners, as I understand, we're not going to be doing the, the, the they will not be doing the presentation of the sketch plan. And um, so we're just going to look at um, the ordinance and the Fitch uh, school conditional use with the waivers. So going with the petition for amendment to Bristol Township zoning ordinance, uh, you've heard all the presentations. Um, I would entertain a motion. Okay. Well, we don't have a motion for recommendation. I'll make a motion, John. Thank you. Make a motion to recommend to council the petition for amendment to Bristol Township Zoning Ordinance. Petition of JRS, JRSGF LLC to amend the Bristol Township Zoning Ordinance Chapter 205 of the Bristol Township Code of Ordinances relating to the regulations for use A8, age qualified residential community to reflect the proposed development of the properties located at 101 Greenbrook Drive, Levittown, PA, tax parcel number 5-72-113, John Fitch property, 10 Plum Tree Place, Levittown, PA, tax parcel number 5-21-162-001, Abraham Lincoln property, and 275 Crabtree Drive, Levittown, PA, tax parcel number 5-39-584-001, George Washington property. I have a motion. Do I have a second to the motion? I will second that motion. It's been moved and second. Any comments or questions on the motion? Yes, just one comment. Um, I am counting on all the information which I received here tonight um, from both the applicants. Um, the, the information given to me was correct and that that is the way things will be going down on this project and that specifically since we're amending um, you know, a lot of these things in this ordinance to specifically allow for this project to go through. I mean, let's face it, that's the reason why we're changing the zoning ordinance. So I would just say, as a resident, I'm counting on all the information that was given to me to be true and correct. Understood. Thank you, Kathy, for your comment. And um, I'm also going to make a comment. Uh, this is the first time something like this has really come in front of this commission in the many years that I've been on this commission. And um, so it is kind of new territory, and we understand that we're actually recommending um, kind of in the dark, I guess the way I'm going to put it. Because like Kathy said, we really don't know what really is going to happen until we see the proof in the pudding. Um, we are going to rely on the credibility uh, of your uh, of your company and, uh, and the developers, and I do understand that everything that we have on camera here as far as uh, working with the township um, uh, engineers, uh, as many times as things may have to go back and forth, uh, th this will happen. Uh, and uh, we don't uh, get blindsided. Um, and I'm sure you understand that. I mean, if you were sitting in our seats, you would probably think the same way. So yeah, with fine. that comment being made, I do have a motion and I have a second. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor of the uh, recommendation to council say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. And good luck with that, gentlemen. The next thing is we're going through the conditional use of the Fitch property. So I would entertain a motion for conditional use. I'll make a motion to recommend the council for conditional use, uh, John McGrath. 1265 Woodburn Road, Levittown, PA, requesting uh, conditional use approval 
in order to create an age-qualified residential community on the property located at 101 Greenbrook Drive, Levittown, PA, tax parcel 5-72-133. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. It's been moved and second. Any questions or comments? I do have a comment. We need to include the waiver. I make that motion with uh, the waivers also being included. I, if I may, I would suggest you defer waivers until the land development plan, but include a condition that we comply with the Gilmore and Associates review letter. Okay. Exactly, yep. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate that. Again, my head's spinning a little bit tonight. Yeah, this is, this is uh, it's taken, it's taken us two waters. years to figure it out, so it's... Well, uh, again... And, this is uncharted. And I, and I appreciate everybody's both uh, patience and input and help guiding us through this because we all want to see this happen. We just want to make sure it's done right. Uh, so Judy, Judy asked to add to the uh, motion that you include in addition to the Gilmore conditional use letter that it's also conditioned upon satisfactorily uh, meeting obtaining approvals from other boards including but not limited to the council and the zoning hearing board if needed that's agreeable okay yes so now you've heard the motion do we have to repeat the motion <laughs> I think we got it <laughs> yeah. I didn't write as, that down <laughs> as stated <laughs> thank you very much as stated so now we have a motion <clears throat> it's been moved it's been second there have been comments and um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Good luck, sir. Now. Still need a motion on the condition, sorry, the conditional use for Lincoln, the same format as the, as the uh, Fitch one, which would be compliance with the Gilmore Associates review letter and obtaining uh, all necessary permits and approvals from all third-party reviewing agencies. I will make that motion, John. <laughs> to, bear with me. All right, here we go. To recommend a... Sorry, to recommend to council the conditional use of John McGrath, is that it? Okay. 1265 Woodburn Road, Levittown, PA, requesting conditional use approval in order to create an age-qualified residential community on the property located at 10 Plum Tree Place, Levittown, PA, tax parcel number 5-21-162-001. Can I have a motion? Do I have a second? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, yeah. There's more, John. Oh, yeah. There's more. <laughs> I'm sorting through my papers now. There's more. Okay. Contingent, Contingent upon time. the Gilmore and Associates letter, making sure... All third-party permits and approvals are obtained from all necessary third-party third reviewing agencies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also with... Um, a approval but not limited to council. Yep. Right. All right. Yeah. I will se I will second it. I will second it. Say aye. 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 I got one. I got one more. I got one more. Would you like me? I, I'm happy to try to frame a motion if it's acceptable to 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 the commission. Oh! 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 So uh, I'll take a shot at it. If the commission is so inclined, it would be to 
grant preliminary and final land development approval to JRSGF LLC uh, for an age qualified residential committee, uh, community on the property located at 101 Greenbrook Drive, subject to compliance with the Gilmore and Associates review letter, compliance with the Township Traffic, Traffic Engineer review letter, compliance with the Fire Marshal review letter. Am I missing any? And, and the Bucks County Planning Commission review letter uh, and consideration of the waivers uh, as discussed by the Planning Commission with the applicant. I don't know if you want to go What's by that? individual waivers, but I think there's some position on some of the waivers that I think we put as discussed. We'd certainly like clarification on what the recommendation is um, for any specifics on the waiver. So through the chair, if I could. Kathy. So um, the sidewalks. So you're asking for curbing and sidewalks, and I've heard that, see, that there isn't, um, people don't walk on sidewalks. Um, but we have asked for fee in lieu thereof. So possibly instead of asking in fee in lieu thereof, we could um, take funds that might have been used for sidewalks and do a little bit of that ornamental fencing or make the burns or do something else that would consider doing something else. I'm just throwing it out. John, go ahead. Yeah. You're with me? Okay. There you go. Oh, okay. I, I, I mean, again, and I will put, put it out there. Um, you know, normally I would make these motions and go ahead, but I'm trying to step back a little because as I said, I'm a resident there and residents have explained the concerns, but I see both sides of this project. So um, whatever you can do, and, and once again, I will reiterate, I have all the trust in the world that our zoning will do the right thing and that our council members will do the right thing when it comes to them. So with this, John, I, I one, guess. Can I, can I, one clarification, I, we, we, I was thinking about this, I don't think I said it out loud, but with, with relation to the curb, because usually it comes curb and sidewalk. Right, right now there's curb out there that's not in great shape. Mm -hmm. It's sporadic. Would, would uh, Planning Commission like to see the curb replaced to be maintained by the property owners in the future anyways as part of their, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think. Obligations, but. And I think we're open to all of that depending what the Planning Commission wants. I mean, I think what it comes down to, it's a, a recommendation to council that the applicant work with the engineer on curb, sidewalk, and fencing, and buffering to right. the satisfaction yes. of. But perhaps you, you're, you're, you're saying you don't think necessarily sidewalk should be installed, but perhaps something along the lines of maybe fencing or other yeah, features. Some type of delineation up there, but again, not being an engineer, um, and just looking at it with the curb, I mean, there was curb there at one time. It, it has been destroyed. So I, quite frankly, really honestly don't know which way to go. I would defer to the engineers on the curbing situation. We, we heard, uh, I think, in the message that, that there's a, an interest in seeing screening with buffering. And yes. yeah, sure, we have the <coughs> best class A buffer that the right, but ordinance has but there may be ways we can work to tweak that. Yep. Um, sidewalk was a, a consideration, but maybe not a necessity, but if somehow we can I incorporate other deterrents of maybe people walking from street to backyards, you know, it sounds like the applicant's willing to do that. So if you're uh, agreeable, we can certainly agree that the uh, motion would be either partial waivers or just uh, coordination to the satisfaction of the professionals to work out what we're hearing as your interest in, in seeing for these items. I think that's fair and I think we're agreeable I, to that. I, I think that would be fair also. So now I'm going to ask for um, a minute here because I want to caucus with the commission. Sure.
Of this, it's not going to be uniform. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, but it's not going to be like uniform for everything else in here. But I don't know what that does to the visual. Aerial picture. Uh, okay. I just want to use the rest of this one more time. Okay. Mm -hmm. This would be great. <laughs> more about that than the rest of this. Sure. It's not going to be all day. Nobody, yeah. You got to get part of it. You got to get part of it. You got to get part of it. All right, I think we're back in session. Um, and Matt, I want to compliment you on the very good uh, presentation of the, uh, the motion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> un, I was at home practicing in un, front of the mirror. Un, so. unfor unfortunately, did you, did you write it down? I had the whole thing. I memorized it. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, it's a guide because the motion actually has to come from this council. Understood. So or this commission. So someone's going to make the motion up here for that. I did not memorize it, so bear with me. Um, I would like to make a motion with regards to JRSGF LLC, 1265 Woodburn Road, Levittown, requesting preliminary and final land development approval for an age-qualified residential community on the property located at 101 Greenbrook Drive, Levittown, PA, tax parcel 5-72-113. I'd like to recommend to council, preliminary and final, contingent upon um, a lot of the various things that we talked about tonight um, to satisfy the concerns of the neighbors and the, the surrounding residents um, with the waivers granted with the exception of the curbing and sidewalk waiver um, in which we would we want curbing um, the sidewalks we would like to request a fee in lieu of and maybe that fee could be used for you know the most robust um, buffer as practical Okay. And, and also um, contingent upon uh, the, the roads um, reviews, um, the fire marshal review, um, council, and any other third party that would be applicable. Okay, and just for a clarification sake, uh, fee in lieu of usually relates to a payment to the township. Uh, but if you're asking, you want us to reallocate our funds, I think, to increase the buffer. Correct. That's what, okay. Yes. Yes, understood. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. It's been moved and second. Any comments or questions on that motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Aye.
Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Good for luck, your time. gentlemen. Thank you. Thank yes. you. We're done. We're done. <laughs> having nothing else, having nothing else on our agenda this evening, I'll entertain a motion I'll to adjourn. Motion. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> you already have both. You're good. Do I have a second? Oh, second. Moved and second. <laughs> Comments or questions? Thank you. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Good evening, everyone.